Hi again. So today we're going to talk about the chapter, How to Tell a True War Story. This started on page 64 and went through page 81. All right. So this chapter has several stories in it, but it also talks about war stories in general. What are war stories? How do we tell if a war story is true or if it's made up? Are they important? Why are they important? Just over all of these things. So as you read, you were supposed to locate eight characteristics of a true war story. Well, I came up with way more than eight, right? As you read through, um, there's just so, so many um, as, as, as you go through, right? So at page 65, it starts, war, uh, true war story is never moral. It does not instruct. It doesn't encourage virtue. It doesn't suggest models of proper human behavior. It does not restrain men from doing things that they've always done. That's just on page 65. You got five right there. Continues on page 66, you have as an allegiance to obscenity and evil. They embarrass you. They cannot be believed. They never end. They don't generalize. They don't analyze. Um, your stomach believes. So these true war stories are not also at the very end. It tells you the true war stories are not actually about war at all. The true war stories are actually about friendship and love and beauty and caring and um, camaraderie. Um, and you learn that as you read this chapter and you check some of these stories out. So let's see what stories they tell us here. Well, first on the first page, you had to come up with um, this letter, the letter that Rat, Rat Kylie writes. So his best, best friend, best friend in the whole wide world, Kurt Lemon, gets blown to pieces. The one that gets blown up into the tree and they have to go peel all of his pieces off of the tree later on. And um, after his best friend dies, he kind of freaks out, right? He freaks out. The loss is overwhelming. And he like mutilates and kills this baby buffalo. The story is crude. The story is disgusting, especially the way he blows apart the different pieces of this poor little water buffalo. The story is a love story. Because what it's doing is it's showing you the depth of feeling that Rat Kylie had for his friend and the loss and the pain and also emphasizes that these guys are young. These guys are just teenagers and they don't know how to deal with death. They don't know how to deal with particularly this kind of death. It's not like his friend died in his sleep. His friend was blown up into small pieces right in front of him and they had to go scrape his pieces out of a tree. So imagine that, right? If you've been through that, how easy would it be just to kind of overcome and just move on? You don't. So he had to deal with it because he's still out in the field. He's still being hunted by the Viet Cong. He's still in the middle of a war and he has to deal with this. And so what he does is he, he kills this baby buffalo. And then he walks off crying before it's actually dead. Um, it's a love story. It's a love story between Rat and Kurt Lemon. Um, because not love like they were lovers, but this friend, right? This friendship, this love story, the thing that they had together. Um, so you had to come up with what are some of the topics that you see here. You've got peace versus war, right? Because you have these two guys who are very friendly. The rat like, writes a letter to the, the sister later on, and it's just this, he's talking about his friend and how wonderful he is and talks about, you know, fishing and, and everything that they did together. So truth in storytelling, because maybe some of the stories are a little exaggerated. Peace and versus war, you also have that. Um, you have some crude humor, because when he does write the letter to the girl, she doesn't write back. And because she doesn't write back, he calls her a coos, right? He could have called her anything, um, but that's the word he chooses to call her, which is obviously not a nice word to call a girl. Don't do that. Um... So we got a little bit of crude humor because that's how they're dealing with things. They're just dealing with stuff in, in the worst possible way. They don't know how to deal with things. And so that's that's what happens there. Um, the game that they were playing when when Kurt Lemon died was they were throwing smoke bombs back and forth. And then like take a step back, you toss it. Take a step back, you toss it like this. He took a step back and he stepped on a on a baby trap. And that's how he got blown up. Um you had lots of peace and war imagery on page 67. You had great juxtaposition, um, except for the laughter, things were quiet, or maybe that's 
this juxtaposition, but maybe it's a paradox, right? It's that's the type of juxtaposition you have here, a paradox, except for the laughter, things were quiet. First, it seems like, I don't know if that can be true. Oh, yeah. You know what? That's the only thing that could be heard. That's all that was left. Um, let's see. All right, so there's this other story that starts on page 68 and is being told by Mitchell Sanders. Let's talk about that one. So he tells the story about a six-man patrol that goes up into the mountain and they're there for seven days and they just have to lay there absolutely still and quiet. He talks about this fog that's covering everything and um, that they've been laying there absolutely silent all these days and then suddenly they start hearing this music. He mentions that there's like chit chat and champagne corks, like some sort of a cocktail party going on. And he hears chamber music and violins and some Buddha stuff and some boys choir and just really crazy, right? All the guys hear it and finally they can't take it anymore. And so they call it in to um, their leader and they bomb the area. They absolutely bomb the area 100%, take it apart. And and they go back. When they go back, their leader is like, dude, what happened? There was no one there. Nothing happened. Like, why did we waste all that firepower? And nobody says a word. So this is one of those true war stories that has little aspects of it that maybe have been embellished a little bit, right? What's the point of this story? All the men stick together at the end. None of them say anything. It's about this camaraderie. It's also about fear the anxieties that are brought up whenever you're at war and you're just sitting there and you're waiting for things. Um, you have to listen for your enemy. So they're sitting there listening for the enemy and they hear all this stuff. And do those sounds sound like enemy sounds? So it's very, very confusing. The men all kind of stick together on it. The next day, the guy gets up and he's like, listen, I might've made a few embellishments to that story. Like maybe the Philharmonic wasn't there. You know, he goes through and tells him a few of the things, maybe those things weren't true. I'm not really sure. Um, so that happens, um, it goes back and forth to the Buffalo and to the Kurt Lemon story several times. We already talked about this. So there's no reason for us to continue talking about this. But let's turn to page 76 and check this out. So Mitchell Sanders takes out his yo-yo and he says, well, that's Nam. He said, the garden of evil. Over here, man, every sin's real, fresh, and original. How do you generalize? War is hell. That's not the half of it. Because war is also mystery and terror, adventure and courage discovery and holiness and pity and despair and longing and love it's nasty it's fun war is thrilling war is drudgery war makes you a man war makes you dead Got lots of things going on right here in this paragraph at the bottom of 76 the one you had to label um and mark the garden of evil so what are they calling the garden of evil instead of the garden of eden which would be like heaven itself right heaven on earth garden of evil is referring to vietnam we're referring to Vietnam as hell. This is a terrible place. These guys don't like it here. Um, then they go on and we have all of these paradoxes, right? We have these, these statements next to actually a little bit of an antithesis and paradox. War is nasty, war is fun. War is thrilling, war is drudgery, right? So you should have marked some of these. You also, it goes right on to the next page where you have um, war is grotesque, but in truth, war is also beauty. So you should have marked up some paradox here, some antithesis here. There's an oxymoron here when we talk about the awful majesty of combat. Um, we have some juxtaposition. You have the illusion that we pointed out in your notes. Find that illusion and make sure that you look it up or figure that out. What does it mean? What is it talking about? Um, all of these paradox and this antithesis is just used to show us that there's more than one side to war. It's not just about the the blood and guts. There's the friendship, there's the beauty and the camaraderie that is there as well. Um, on page 79, I'm sorry, let's go back to page 78. You had to identify the extended metaphor. So hopefully you look down um, about middle page and you saw that Mitchell Sanders was right. The common soldier, at least war has the feel, the spiritual texture of a great ghostly fog, thick and permanent. It goes on to talk about this thick fog that's covering everything and you can't quite see when you're in the fog right some things look blurry the lines are blurred 
Lines are blurred between what's okay and what's not okay, what's good, what's evil. Um, ugliness, beauty, things look different when they're in the fog, and that's what he's referring to here. So this is an extended metaphor regarding war and what it's like being in war compared to a dark, dense fog. You also had to find an example of PTSD and crude humor on page 79. Well, PTSD, as you know, because we've discussed it in class, is just when they have these flashbacks of things that happen. So it, it does talk about this guy and he wakes up in the middle of the night and he's thinking of one of these war stories. He wakes his wife up and he's telling her, he's telling her the story and then he can't remember the point in the end. And then he kind of freaks out a little bit and he keeps having the visions of the Kurt Lemon getting blown up in the tree, right? So the crude humor, remember, we have to find the crude humor on this page. What are they doing to deal with this idea? Remember now, Rat Kylie gets so upset over his friend's death that he mutilates and kills that baby buffalo. Dave Jensen is singing Lemon Tree as they're throwing down his parts from the, bot from the, from the tree, right? The cart lemon is blown up, his body parts are all over, and they're throwing the body parts down out of the tree. And they're singing Lemon Tree. This is crude humor, guys. This isn't, it's not okay anywhere else, but maybe here at this time, because these are young guys not really knowing how to deal with it. So you're right here near the end, you had to look at this paragraph that starts on 79 and it continues over to page 80. What are they talking about here? They're talking about war stories and why do war stories matter? How do you know if they matter? So I really want you to read this. I want you to read that paragraph two or three times and come up with your explanation. You're supposed to write it in the side there. What are they talking about in this paragraph? It's really important. You may need to read it more than once. So go ahead and check that out. The whole story about the water buffalo, we talked about this, it's not a war story, it's a love story, right? It's about friendship. And then finally, you had to come up with the purpose of this chapter. So what was the purpose of this chapter? Were they relaying some sort of a story to us um, or, or a message to us about war stories? Maybe that war stories aren't always about blood and guts, but they're about the love and the friendship. Or maybe it's to explain the truth. Um, about a war story and how maybe sometimes there's not a moral to the story, but it's something to bring people closer together or to change a person's thinking in some way. So hopefully this helped you out with how to tell a true war story. I will see you next time.